The year is now 1897, and J.J. Thompson is using a cathode ray tube to investigate mysterious beams of light in an effort that will help us piece together the structure of the atom. His experimental apparatus consisted of a sealed glass tube from which almost all of the air had been removed. The tube contained two electrodes. When a high voltage was applied between these electrodes, a visible beam of light appeared called a cathode ray. When magnets were applied to this beam, the beam was deflected. It changed trajectories. Specifically, the beam was deflected towards the positive plate and away from the negative plate. Given that opposite charges attract, these cathode rays must be negatively charged. These findings were repeatable, regardless of what metals were used for the electrodes, meaning regardless of the source of the cathode ray. In a refined version of this experiment, the strengths of the magnetic fields were carefully measured, and the extent of the deflection of the cathode ray was also measured. These values were used to calculate a charge to mass ratio of these deflected particles. And that value is negative 1.759 times 10 to the 11th coulombs per kilogram. And we've also started calling these cathode rays electrons. He discovered electrons. In other words, we don't know the charge or the mass of electrons, but we know the ratio of those two values. Now, this value has a much larger amplitude than expected, meaning those particles have a much, much smaller mass than that of an atom. These particles are minuscule, even on an atomic scale. His findings were controversial at the time because it challenged the prevailing notion that atoms are indivisible. But Thomson's idea was gradually accepted because his results were reproducible as all good science is. With this experiment, he discovered a subatomic particle that we now call the electron. He found its charge to mass ratio and was awarded the 1906 Nobel Prize. In a nutshell, here are J.J. Thomson's findings. Number one, electrons are negatively charged because opposite charges attract and the ray was deflected towards the positive plate. Number two, electrons have much less mass than atoms. Three, electrons are identical to each other in their charge to mass ratio. Four, electrons have a charge to mass ratio of negative 1.759 times 10 to the 11th coulombs per kilogram. And what does this mean for the structure of an atom? Atoms are not indivisible as Dalton had proposed. Instead, they contain smaller subatomic particles, including these negatively charged electrons. If you want a moment to propose your own atomic structure, pause now, because I'm about to show you two competing models from this point in time. From 1903, we have Hantaro Nagaoka's Saturn-like atom. In this model, we have our positively charged portion of the atom in a sphere in the middle, and we have a halo of negatively charged electrons outside of it. And our second model is from 1904. This is J.J. Thomson's plum pudding model, in which we have negatively charged electrons mixed in with positively charged regions of the atom, kind of like raisins in a cake. But, if you have ever bitten into a chocolate chip cookie and instead got raisin, you know disappointment, and you know exactly how I imagine the scientific community felt when they realized that neither of these are quite right. If you've ever been the victim of a raisin cookie that you thought was chocolate chip, then click that like button. My heart goes out to you. Thank you for watching Chemistry in a Nutshell.